Hello and welcome to the academyofworship.org YouTube channel. My name's Chris and today we're talking about stacking overdrive or distortion pedals. In the interest of this video not being three hours long, I'm not going to get into a lot of the details in all the different kinds of distortions and overdrives that you can stack, but I want to cover the basics or at least what you need to know if you have more than one overdrive or distortion pedal and how you should think about using them. So why would you want to stack overdrives and what does that even mean? Most times when you're creating your guitar rig, you want on different sounds at your disposal at any given moment. Well, one of the ways that you can do that is to provide yourself different gain stages. I've already created a video about gain. You can go back and watch that and it covers some of the things we're gonna cover here. But in this video, we're specifically talking about stacking more than one overdrive or distortion pedal. So in creating your rig and getting those sounds at your disposal, a lot of times you want a clean sound, then you want a mildly overdriven sound, then you want to kick it over the edge for solos or leads or other parts that might take more gain or sustain on your guitar. For the purposes of this video, there's a couple of ways you can approach this. One is, is if you're starting with a clean guitar amp. And the second way is if you have an already overdriven amp. We're going to cover both ways in this video, and hopefully one of those applies to you. And if not, you can find a way to apply them to whatever setup you're using. So let's jump right in. First, let me cut over to my board and you can see what I'm going to be doing here. So you'll notice that we're running two very common overdrive pedals. The way that I'm running them here is this full drive two by full tone is going to be the main overdrive pedal that you get the majority of your overdrive sounds from. The second pedal we're running is a Boss Super Overdrive, SD1. This one's running into this pedal, which means if you don't know that my guitar input comes in this side of the pedal, it goes out into the full drive two, and that goes out to my amplifier. So I'm using the Super Overdrive to boost or overdrive the full drive too. One of the things you have to consider, like I said before, is how your amp is set up to begin with. Having a clean amp is common in a lot of worship scenarios for guitar players. Maybe you show up at church and there's already an amp provided for you, or maybe you brought your own and you want to use your pedals for the majority of your sounds. Either way, you're usually going to be starting with a clean pedal platform or a clean amplifier. In this case, my bass tone is this. Cutting back over to the pedals, my full drive two, I have set with a relatively low amount of overdrive. I turned the tone down a little bit because I wanted it to be not as bright when it kicked on. And the volume is just a bit over unity, which is the volume at which it would be exactly the same volume as your uh, clean guitar sound. So it, it bumps up a little tiny bit. And I would say that the rule of thumb would be that when you kick on an overdrive pedal, you want it to be slightly louder than the sound you've already got. It's just a good rule of thumb. It doesn't have to play havoc with your sound guys and be really, really loud. But when you kick it on, you're usually doing it for some emphasis and gain just a tiny bit over unity or the level at which your amp is already set. So in this case, we have this, my clean guitar sound. We kick on the full drive two. And that's our first stage of overdrive, meaning we went from clean to one stage up, and that's what you got right there. I would say that's plenty of overdrive for most things you're gonna do in most situations. But the next step would be to kick in another stage of overdrive. And here's what that sounds like when we kick in our super overdrive. You'll notice it gets a little more nasal. And that's due to the fact that it's a super overdrive. It's based on an Ibanez Tube Screamer, which has a sound of its own. All pedals that are clones of that or some variation of that have a mid hump and they really kind of bring out the mids. So in this case, that's good for leads anyway because you want to poke out just a little bit when you kick it on. So you'll notice when I did kick it on that that mid hump happened as well as more gain was added to the sound and the sustain was increased on my guitar. Now, we're still not into shredding metal territory or anything like that. But I would say that this setting right here is a great setting when you're stacking two overdrives together and you want to kick them both on at the same time and still have some control over your guitar. One thing to keep in mind is how to set these drives up initially to know whether it's good or not. I would suggest setting them up individually. So you already heard what the full drive two sounds like when I kick it on with my amp, but let's hear what the super overdrive sounds like by itself. Once again, my clean tone. Kick on just the super overdrive. 
Kick on just the full drive. Now you'll notice they're really similar when played by themselves. The Full Drive 2 is a little bit different sounding than a Super Overdrive, but they're really similar. But when you stack them, you can think of everything each pedal has as being doubled, basically. So if you have a mid-hump in one pedal and a mid-hump in the other pedal, that mid-hump will be really pronounced when they're both on. If they're both set at the same amount of gain, it's almost like doubling the gain when they're both on. A good way to address overdrives is to set them at a sound level that they would sound like great by themselves, so that when they stack, you'll roughly get twice the amount of gain and things like that. Okay, so let's take it to the next level. Let's stick with a clean amplifier, which is this. And let's take our first stage overdrive up a bit. So we'll turn it on, and we're gonna crank the overdrive up to about right there. And here's what that sounds like. As you can hear, that's a bit more gain. So let's say that we wanted our first gain stage to have a lot more gain than our first version did. If we don't touch the super overdrive and turn it on, you'll notice it's still set the same way. Now play. Without it. It still sounds great. What we're doing is we're kicking the front end of our full drive too. So this is mainly where we're getting our gain, but we wanna boost it up a notch and we want this to add more gain to the front end of this pedal. Now, one thing you have to be sure of is you can overdo it with kicking the front end of a pedal. If I turn these knobs up on the super overdrive, we get this. We kick it on. One of the problems you immediately notice is there's a bunch of fizz on top. Now I found that when you're running one overdrive pedal as your main gain sound, and it sounds great, that if on the one that you're boosting it with, you have the gain turned up too much, it starts sounding fizzy. So what you wanna do, back the gain or drive down quite a bit and use your level knob to push the front end of your pedal and it gets less fizzy. Let's check that out. So here's without it. Okay, now we'll kick on just the Boss Super Overdrive and I'll, I'll turn the level up a bit. So in that case, the gain definitely went up, but you didn't get that fizz on top. And I found the only way to combat that is the one you're using to boost turn the drive of the gain down and use the volume to boost the front of the pedal. So check this out. We're gonna turn the gain almost all the way off, if not all the way off on the super overdrive and peg the volume on the super overdrive and see what that sounds like. So here's just the full drive too. Here's the super overdrive with just the volume turned up. So I would salt the taste, start turning knobs just a little bit, but remember that a little goes a long way in the one you're using to boost overdrives with. Now, of course, you can set the full drive or whatever overdrive you're using as your first stage to be far more overdriven if you'd like, and then boost it even more. In fact, a common thing in the metal world is to have a very highly gained up amp and to actually hit it with an overdrive pedal to tighten it up and they'll boost it quite a bit but you don't notice more gain necessarily, but you notice that the low end gets tighter, things aren't as flubby, and you could use that rule or that tightening up with any gain pedal you're using. You just have to go sparingly. So again, use the pedal that you're boosting with more of a volume boost than a gain boost, otherwise you're gonna get fizz. Okay, to demonstrate that last point, we're gonna start with an amp that already has some gain on it. I don't think in most worship scenarios you're gonna have this. In most worship scenarios, you're going to want a clean amp at some point. To show you what it does to an already gained up amp, Let's check it out. As you can see, our bass sound has far more gain. Now this is gonna be our starting point. No pedals at this point. What you just heard was pure amp. Now, without touching anything on the pedals from last time, let's see what it sounds like. So first, let's add the full drive too. 
You'll notice that it's still set with a tone down just a bit because I didn't want it too bright. And the overdrive is still set here, but we're gonna probably back it off in just a second. But here's what it sounds like without having touched it. <laughs> So without it, with it, it's a pretty good rock sound. Let's back the overdrive down a bit so we're not boosting it quite as hard when we kick it on. Now we're back to about where we started originally with the other clean sound. But because we already have a gained up amp, it's still going to boost quite a bit. Here we go. So here's, here's the bass sound. Now we add this on and get this. It sounds pretty awesome. That would work great for leads. That would work great for adding sustain. And if you noticed, the bottom end gets tightened up quite a bit when we add that. Now, personally, this is about where I leave it. I use my bass guitar sound sort of gained up and then I boost it for solos and things like that with kind of this setting right here. If you wanted to get crazy and continue to add gain stages, you could kick on the super overdrive where we left it. Once again, for reference, our bass sound. First stage. Now we boost that. I wouldn't go that far personally, but you can. There's no rules. I personally like to boost with mostly volume into an amp that's already gained up quite a bit. I find it's a more natural, smooth gain as opposed to adding overdrive into the sound. You can add some overdrive in there and see where you like it because every amp is different that you're gonna be running these into. What I'm showing you here isn't the end all be all way to boost an amplifier, but most boosts, especially when they're overdrives, are just adding volume to the front of your amp. Because if you think about it, the hotter the signal goes into your amplifier, the more the preamplifier has to work, and in turn, that adds gain or distortion to your amplifier. Now, in another video, we'll talk about boosts separately because a clean boost is an entirely different animal. It does similar things, but it is different sounding. But in this video, you got overdrive pedals into a clean amp, and you got overdrive pedals into a gained up amp, both stacked. So getting back to the topic at hand, when you're stacking overdrive pedals, it's important to know what pedals are running into what, and it's important to know how much to boost either the amplifier itself or the pedal that's boosting your amplifier. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, there's a lot more you can talk about when stacking overdrive pedals, and a lot of factors that come into play with what you're plugging them into, what comes before or after those pedals. But in this video, we talked about just two run-of-the-mill overdrive pedals going into an amplifier, whether it's clean or already dirty. I hope this gives you some ideas, and I hope that you can take those ideas to your own rig, however you have it set up, or maybe you were thinking about purchasing some new pedals or some new gear that would benefit from this kind of knowledge. And as always, go turn some knobs, flip some switches, play with it. It really does come down to subjective opinion. It's what the guitar player or the band or whoever likes, and whatever the song you're playing needs, to be honest. But that's it for now. I hope you can use it. Go forth and guitar play. Like always, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out if you subscribe to the channel so that you can see any future content we're gonna put out. It really helps me out if you like it. It tells me that this content is stuff that you like. And please share it with your friends or worship musicians or other musicians that may benefit from it. Maybe they have a question about this specific topic or other topics we've already covered. We're here to help. And if you have a comment or a question about the stuff that we're covering, or maybe you have an idea for a future video, please drop a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. Have fun playing guitar, twist those knobs, flip those switches. God bless you. Talk to you later.